Get on the floor! Do it now! The Special Constabulary is the nation's volunteer police force. Do you know the gent? Watch your speed. It's made up of over 20,000 members of the public. Oh, he's gone down there. Who give their time to fight crime in their communities. Out! Get out of the car! How do you get out of the car? Specials combine their day jobs. Stage, please! And home lives. He's a good boy. With being serving police officers on the front line. Coming up. A routine stop and search gets heated for Kirsty. Steve leads the specials as they help police a demonstration. A lot of people start to get carried along by the crowd and they start to see red mist. And Tony comes to the rescue of an elderly lady. She's on the bed. Keep going, keep going, keep going. They need medical attention, and if that means the police service have to enter the property, then so do you. Six p.m. Special Sergeant Kirsty Bruce is attending an operation briefing aimed at tackling a surge of burglaries in the Cambridge area. This is the last 14 days serious acquitted crime across Cambridge City. We're getting a real spike of offending. The purpose of the operation was to provide high visibility patrols in burglary hotspots so that the public knew we were doing something about it and criminals knew that we were around. One of our criminals in that area does also come out of jail today, so we need to be keeping an eye out for him. And that's it, really, guys. Let's get out there and let's uh, let's do it. In her day job, Kirsty is a nanny, looking after two children. I like working with children. I like the things that they come out with. You know what your day is going to be. It's going to be taking them to school and picking them up, but you don't know what they're going to say. They always just manage to make you smile. Hello. Move your face back a little bit. He's got a very big... Hello. Both jobs require a lot of patience, a lot of listening, a good sense of humour, and telling people what to do. Tonight, Kirsty is on patrol with regular police sergeant, Jamie Stenton. While patrolling a known crime hotspot, Sergeant Stenton spots the convicted burglar mentioned in the briefing. He was released from prison earlier today and is with his girlfriend. What? You haven't done nothing! No! We're allowed to party. All we wanted to do was have a chat with them and possibly search them. It was just a very straightforward situation to start with. What's he done? He's just come out of prison. No, I'm not speaking to no one. Leave them. They're my friends. Leave them there. Would you mean speak to your colleague? I'm not even wanted anymore. The man is being compliant, but his girlfriend is angry about being stopped by police. When someone's being aggressive, the best way is to not rise to it and to try and bring them down, calm them down to your level so that you can talk about the situation and resolve it as best as possible. Do you want to search me? Yeah, you got to do. You can leave your coat. You don't have to take your coat off. Search your coat. Here you go. You don't even play. I will search. Search that first. I'm just saying I'll search it. I don't want you feeding me up. She was shouting at us, not being particularly abusive, but just very loud. Do you want to check my shoes? There you go. There's Look, one. Keep your shoes on for a minute. You're going to get well, a wet foot. you hurry up then? I because will. I'm getting rained on. What do we do to get stopped? Walk down the road. Sometimes people can be really compliant when you stop them and explain to them that you're going to search them. But other times people seem to think that they have to be doing something wrong. Why are you stopping me for? You can't just stop and search anyone for nothing. We have to have grounds as to why we want to do it. For those two in particular, they were in a well-known burglary hotspot. He's a burglar that's just been released from prison. I think that gives anyone grounds to stop and search him. Because what? The area. Pick my light up, please. Right. Oi, hang on a minute. I said pick my light up, please. Don't I didn't tell me what to do. I didn't it's say it a whole way. The woman is becoming increasingly agitated. As a special, it is always important to keep your guard up, to not relax, because the minute you relax is the minute that something 
will happen. You need to just constantly watch, just look for the little signs that can indicate to you that this situation could potentially get out of control. Oh, You're not going to be standing the there way. dictating Look. to us what we will be doing. You, I said, can you pick my light up, please? There. She goes, what? I said, can you pick my light up, please? Because I'm not taking orders from you. Oh, well, I'm not taking orders from you. Why should I take oh, orders from you when I've done nothing go. wrong? It does frustrate me when people speak to us and they're rude, they're loud, they're aggressive. I just think there's no need for it. I would never dream of speaking to a police officer in that way. Don't We're just yeah. doing a job and when they need us, they'll call us and they'll want us to respond quickly and to be nice to them. So why can't we have that respect back? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, see you are, and I'm making right. a f***ing report. What's your, what's your excuse for arresting me? me? What, what, what I didn't swear at you, listen, you listen I swore in a sentence. I said... Having been searched, the woman is free to go and her boyfriend tries to pull her away from the officers. So I want to know why you stopped me. You can't just stop me for nothing. We'd stop them, we'd search them, we'd have a chat. They were free to go and they started walking away. But then she came back for a little bit more. What's well he done? He's, well he's just come out of prison today. Well well yeah, and I've just come to court the other day. I don't want you brother. floating apart. She was given more than enough warnings and then some, and she still didn't take it. She wasn't going to leave. Yeah, what? What about him? That's right. what, you can't f say that's well, my brother, that you're going to stop You're going to stop swearing get off or you're going to get nicked. No. Do you understand? No, you're so Last chance. You're telling me about my brother, saying that I'm getting stopped about my brother. And I will, and I hope this camera's reporting. What? What's your Don't number? Don't you put your hands on me. Oh, Do you look understand? Look, get off my arm. Don't you put get your hands on me. Get off my arm. When she went to grab Jamie, that's then going from a verbal to a physical situation, which there was just no need for. Why? Why am I arrested? Why am I arrested when I look at your number? What have I been arrested for? Section 5 of the Public Order Act. You have plenty of warnings. Arresting her was the only option. There really was nothing else that we could do. We were pushed into a corner and that was the only option left. The officers put the woman in handcuffs for her own safety and theirs. Sergeant Stenton insists she faced a patrol car for fear of being spat at. Get the f off me. <laughs> Look at my coat, he's in my head! You told us to put it on your Move my f coat! You are sitting there, I said, could I turn round? And you go, no, because you're going to spit at me. Did I f spit at you? Yes, you did! Yes, you did! We tried our best to calm her down, but it just wasn't working. The woman is extremely distressed and out of control. All the officers can do now is wait for the custody van. Get off of me! No, I don't care! Being a special is quite similar to being a nanny. It's about boundaries, not letting people take too much and pushing their luck. It's quite similar working with the public as it is working with children. Shut up! If you just calm down, Why then we can... Why calm because down? Because we've got to stand nothing. you up when you're behaving I've like this. I've done nothing! When the van turned up, I was relieved. Right, you ready to get off me? I want to get off myself! I want to get off myself! The woman went to court and pleaded guilty to a public order offence. She was fined £50 and ordered to pay an extra £85 for breaching an existing court order. I think the whole situation was a complete waste of police time. <laughs> My training as a special has really helped me deal with aggressive behaviour, people that are rude. I am now used to being shouted at an awful lot. So this is just part and parcel of the job and it just doesn't faze me. Specials are unpaid volunteers who work alone or alongside the regular police to fight crime in their communities. You got all of them. They don't want to see you walking on the main road again. Come on. Recovery's obviously on route. Specials are not police community support officers. They are fully fledged members of the police force who have the same powers in law as their paid colleagues, including the power of arrest. Nice. Stop it. Move over. 
No, 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 no. Move out of the way. No. Within many special constabularies, officers can rise through the ranks, from constable all the way to chief specials officer. Ouch, I found a thorn. Let me remind you, you're under arrest, and if you can say, we'll be written down. Specials work 16 hours a month or more as volunteers and undertake all kinds of duties, from policing community events to arresting hardened criminals. Cambridge City Centre. Today, the specials are taking part in a massive operation to police a demonstration by the English Defence League. Around 80 EDL members are expected to take part in the demonstration against plans to build a mosque in the area. But hundreds more are expected to hold a counter-demonstration organised by Unite Against Fascism, a pressure group who have already arrived in the city centre in their hundreds. What a sick joke these people are! Past demonstrations have seen major clashes between the English Defence League and Unite Against Fascism. And in charge of policing the operation is Superintendent Vicky Skeels. When you get crowds of people together who feel very passionately about something, sometimes they get swept away by the heat of the moment and then actually commit some criminal act. So the specials will be operating alongside the regulars today, giving us some support so that all the range of contingencies, all the what-ifs can be properly dealt with and responded to by Cambridgeshire Constabulary. Kirsty Bruce is taking part in today's operation. Responsible for her and the rest of the 25-strong unit of volunteers is Special Chief Inspector Steve McCallion. My brief was to ensure that people were able to demonstrate peacefully and that there would be no problems, but also that the people of Cambridge were able to go about their normal business without being disturbed by the demonstration. I've been told that there's about 1,500 to 2,000 that's going to be here. We've had it where we've come along, we've had disorder, uh, and we've dealt with that, and I'm sure that my team will deal with anything that's thrown at them. Around 40 English Defence League members have turned up, fewer than the police were expecting. <laughs> to avoid violent clashes, the EDL members are put in a cordoned area, well away from the counter-demonstrators. We've trained in cordons, so we know how to put on cordons how to basically deal with crowds so that we can look after people and make sure they don't get injured. You can have just a couple of, of people walking past and the next thing you know, it's all just lost control and it can turn into a very serious public order situation at that point. For his day job, Steve runs a chemical etching factory, making metal parts and components for everything from space satellites to cars and cameras. Five more and that's all done, is it? Lovely job. Okay. Steve works at the factory with his wife, Angela. She was also a special, but is now retired. I think he enjoys it. I think he loves it, really. Going out and doing different things, the variety in the community and things like that. And I am proud of him. I think he does an amazing job, as all specials do. After 17 years volunteering, Steve has risen through the ranks to Special Chief Inspector. There tends to be a lot of meetings, unfortunately. However, I do try and get back out on the front line because that's the bit that I really enjoy and that's the best part. 2.30. The EDL demonstration is over, but now police face the hardest task of all. The mile and a half walk back to the train station. So far, the police have maintained control, monitoring the situation, but the next 30 minutes are critical. The police must contain the EDL protesters and protect them. I believe that um, everyone has the right to protest, no matter what their beliefs are, whether I agree with them or not. I would always defend anyone's right to free speech. And as a police officer, I believe that's what I'm there for. The biggest problem with managing a uh, protest when there's extreme views involved is that you have to keep control of 
everyone because there's a lot of people that are trying to break free from the group and then they can then circumnavigate us and come around the, to where we don't want them to be and cause aggressive situations. The Unite Against Fascism march is still going strong. So far, the police operation has gone exactly as planned, but Steve knows things can change in a heartbeat. The dynamics of a crowd can change very, very quickly. It can happen in seconds, literally. All you need is just one little flare point, just a couple of people, and all of a sudden, it all just goes wrong. An EDL protester has broken away from the group. He's immediately surrounded by police. Come on, Steve, come on here a minute. You're not doing nothing wrong. No, 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 no. And escorted away from rival protesters. Steve moves in to help the other officers. But it's not long before they're surrounded by angry Unite Against Fascism supporters. One of the English Defence League guys was being marshaled away out of the area, and as he did that, the crowd started to become upset. This scenario could be a flashpoint for violence. And a lot of people start to get carried along by the crowd, and they start to see red mist. A missile is thrown by a demonstrator and officers immediately try to apprehend him. He caught hold of him, and then I went to assist him and we got him over to a fence, where at that point, because there were so many people around, I was trying to marshal them away from us, not just for my safety or for the other officer's safety, but for the person who was trying to arrest safety, because in a crowd situation like that, people can get pushed, people can get shoved, and people will get injured if you're not careful. Steve helps keep order around the arrested man and prevents the situation from escalating. The reason why the uh, member of the public needed arresting was purely and simply because you can't throw things at other people. You can't throw things at police. It's reckless to do that or to throw things in a public area while you might hit someone because it causes injury. The man was taken into custody and released with a caution. As the crowds disappear and the cleanup operation begins, Steve and all the specials who volunteered today can rest easy knowing that their contribution has been invaluable. We had a good team that worked well and if they hadn't been there, that situation could have been a lot more serious than it was. I think the day was a success. Out of the best part of 500 people that were there, there was only four arrests. We were able to keep a lid on the situation and to ensure that, that no disorder happened. It's 1.30 a.m. and Special Sergeant Tony Bolton has been on shift with colleague PC Lee Norman since 6 p.m. It's been a long, tiring night, which shows no sign of letting up. A call has just come in from a lorry driver who claims that thieves have been stealing fuel from his lorry parked at the side of the road. We need to go and talk to this particular lorry driver. We're fairly sure that he's on the eastbound. We are also on the understanding there was possibly another two lorries that had actually had fuel stolen. Tony's no stranger to this kind of incident. He's been volunteering as a special for 11 years, giving something back to his community. I enjoy being a special because I enjoy helping people. I think that's one of the main roles of the police service. I think if you undertake any form of voluntary organisation, the Special Constabulary is one of them, if you're committed to it, then yes, I think you can change people's lives. In his day job, Tony works as a podiatrist. The next available appointment I would have would be Tuesday. And when he's not providing a service to his patients or the community, he finds time for his family, his daughter Kaylee and wife Veronica. I'm very proud of him. I think people who volunteer um, you know, for their community have to be, you know, applauded and he gives a lot of, of his time to do that. The A14 in Cambridgeshire is a busy stretch of road used by lorries carrying goods from the port of Felixstowe. There are numerous laybys where lorry drivers park up for the night and this is what fuel thieves take advantage of. 
We're not 100% sure exactly how many have actually had fuel stolen at the moment, but it's between one and three. Good evening. Where's your tank, sir? Yeah, okay. Right, here's the evidence of actually what they've done. How much has uh, gone? Stop, uh, stop ingestion. 250. Stop ingestion, 200. Okay, somewhere around about 250 litres. The thieves have stolen from not one, but three lorries, making off with over 800 pounds worth of diesel. So they've broken the lock on this. The thieves tend to operate at night, under cover of darkness. If you don't catch them in the act, it can be very hard to track them down. Did you see them, sir? Did, did, did you witness? Yeah, sleeping. Yeah, you were sleeping? Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, the lorry drivers don't speak much English. But that's not a problem with Tony around. Diesel? Yeah. You? Yeah. Yeah, sleep. OK, so you? No, 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 no. OK. The lorry drivers were Polish and Lithuanian nationals, and it's fair to say they didn't have any English at all. I'm sleeping. Yeah. My phone, telephone, telephone. OK. Yep, yep. Open door. Oh, diesel. Okay. With some pidgin English and some sign language, all I needed to establish from these lorry drivers is, did they see anything? Everybody, everybody sleeping. Yeah. Saw no, 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 nothing. No, no, no. The force have arrested people in connection with fuel thefts in this area, but with no description of the suspects, all Tony can do now is gather as much evidence as he can from the scene. It's very unlikely there's going to be any evidential value on that because pretty much everybody that deals with diesel is going to wear some form of gloves. And the other thing is it's absolutely swimming in diesel. Right, let's go. It's now 2 a.m. and Tony and Lee are close to the end of their shift. Just as they get back on the road, another call comes in. It's suddenly turning into a very late night. The call's just come in. Um, it's a request for assistance from ambulance. Um, there's a lady uh, it's believed that she's fallen behind the door, so she's actually blocking what sounds like her own front door. If you have somebody with some form of medical emergency within a property, they need medical attention, and if that means it, the police service have to enter the property, then so be it. Tony and Lee arrive at the house, where they find the ambulance crew waiting outside. Do we know what's wrong with us? Is it? Uh, I think she's had a fall and she's just lying across her bed awkwardly. Can we just let her know what we're doing? Because yeah. this is going to be loud, yeah? The lady is in her bedroom, not behind the door as first thought. But she can't get to the door and may be injured. So the ambulance crew need to get to her as quickly as possible. The police are here now. They're going to open your door. But it's going to be a bit noisy, OK? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, OK, we've got confirmation. Lee has been trained to use a hardened steel battering ram called an enforcer to gain access to properties. It's only used in case of emergency and where there's no other means of accessing the property. Do you want me just to brace the bottom? No, no. You reckon it'll just go? OK, let's get clear. Usually, just one hit is enough to get the door open. on the bed. Keep going, keep going, keep going. It always gives you a sense of satisfaction, no matter who you help. But there is a special place when that particular person's vulnerable. The old lady was actually in her bedroom. She was in her bed. The paramedics were right behind me. And obviously, what was critically important is the paramedics got to her as quickly as possible. A neighbor arrives after hearing the door being forced open. Sorry for the noise, so we just needed to get in. I mean, obviously, yeah. we, well, the paramedics needed to get in, so we've just got in. So, what, does she call, call for help? Or? I don't know, sir. It's all to do with ambulance. At the end of the day, the ambulance service were already here. They couldn't affect entry. None of the keys in the key lock worked, so we had to get in, so we've just got in. Initially, I just thought it was a concerned neighbour, somebody who admitted to knowing the particular old lady. It was quite nice to show somebody showing some interest like this. The neighbour isn't happy that the police have smashed the lady's door in. And I'm worried that you've bust the door and she's... So and why she have you, why and she, have you, why she, have you bust the door? Just couldn't get in, sir. 
But as time went on, it just became more and more apparent that he just kept asking the same questions over and over again. And he seemed to be getting more and more upset that we'd actually had to take a door in, completely oblivious to the fact that she had a medical emergency. You know, and the only way to meet her needs was to get the paramedics to her. We're not making it a no, big issue, no, sir, at all. No, no, you weren't. No, like, I've told you about a full time. Uh, sir, I no way did I swear at you at all, sir. Tony's had enough and tells the man to go home. We dealt with him quite robustly and eventually just asked him in no, or just told him in no uncertain terms to leave. And with the neighbour gone, the paramedics assess the patient and decide that she'll have to go to hospital. But the police clearly can't leave the property unattended with the door unsecured. We're now trying to make arrangements to get the door, well not repaired, it's probably not repairable, but at least boarded up. And it's however long it takes a tradesman to get here now, potentially to uh, get the door sorted. It's now a quarter to three in the morning and well past the end of Tony and Lee's shift. And like all specials, Tony's not being paid to be here tonight. The moment you put the uniform on and you go out and you're on patrol, you're on duty and you're a police officer, you just have to go with whatever happens. Or what's always at the back of my mind is, what if that was my grandmother? What if that was my mother? How would you feel if, if you just left and it was your grandmother's or your mother's property? The elderly lady is taken by the paramedics to the nearest hospital, but not before she's made sure that her house isn't going to be left open to the elements. She was uh, quite understandably concerned about her door, so uh, just before she left, I just wanted to reassure her that we weren't going to leave until her front door was secure. I had a conversation with her and uh, she thanked me, so that's fine. The locksmith arrives, the door is secured, and Tony and Lee can finally kiss goodbye to their shift. Right, there we go. <laughs> Safely leave the property. Only an hour late off so far. Now we've obviously got to go and take the key to the lady, because obviously she needs to be able to get back into her house. And then once we've done that, <laughs> you often hear about the high-speed car chases, armed criminals, and all that various things that you see in the media. But you know, when it actually comes down to it, nobody was armed. There was no high-speed chase. It was just a vulnerable person that actually needed our assistance that night, and we were in a position to give it. 